I'm gonna make a DIY power station using these Seekin 100 amp hour batteries because they're only $220 a piece. And so for five kilowatt hours of battery capacity, it's gonna be $880 using this setup. This is gonna be for an off-grid dock setup. So I'm simply going to get my wire set up here on my inverter using a breaker in line. And here you can see one of the finished pictures of how this looks. All I'm gonna be doing is crimping on these battery terminals here. And I pretty much bought the majority of this stuff from Amazon. And then you can get the Seekin batteries directly from Seekins. So I'm gonna connect this up to this Lightime 2000 watt inverter that I had on hand and put in this inline breaker. Once this switch is in the on position, it'll work. I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple of a connection as possible. This is a 12 volt setup, so I'm connecting all of the batteries in parallel. And that just means from battery one to battery two, I'm staying positive to positive. Same with these negatives that you see here. Now notice that the inverter doesn't turn on right now, and that's because the breaker is in the off position. So once I flip this on and go back to the inverter, it boots right up without any problems. I'm gonna be making a mount for the solar panels that go on the dock. And so I need to use this unistrut that I'm gonna to attach to the solar panels. And so I need to get four of these cut. And I just picked these up from my local hardware store, which happened to be Home Depot, but you can do it at Lowe's or Ace. Pretty much most hardware stores are gonna carry this type of unistrut. And it's really easy to mount. You can see here one of the finished products of after putting on the unistrut, as well as this three inch galvanized pipe. And it's gonna go on a top cap here that I'll show you in one second. But I just need this unistrut to be as wide as my solar panels. Doesn't matter the size of the solar panels, you can cut them to length. And then this top cap, which is also supplied by other places such as Iron Ridge, I bought mine again on Amazon, work really well to have an adjustable angle but it only works well for one solar panel and how I'm setting it up for this dock setup. I wanna make sure that this does not come loose. So I'm using both a crush washer as well as blue Loctite. If you went with red Loctite, it would be more of a permanent fixture, but I wanted to have the option to undo this in the future should I ever need to. So that's why I stuck with the blue Loctite and that's what I would recommend. The simplest thing is to use one of the closed ends of these wrenches to hold the head of the bolt in place while I get the nut tightened on. And here you can see, this is a pretty heavy and large solar panel. I think at the end, this was close to around 65 or 70 pounds. So it is a beast moving it around but it also makes it much more stout and wind resistant. I gotta get this second solar panel up here and I do recommend saw horses with wood like this because then you're not going to mar the frame of the solar panel and it's all just gonna go on that top cap really easily. Now the box enclosure is a dock rated box enclosure and this is mostly gonna be powering Starlink on a dock out on a lake. So I need to use these wire glands, again, bought from Amazon, and this is gonna allow me to have a watertight connection, allowing my solar wires to go through into the box. This is PV wire. You do not wanna use welding wire or THHN wire, which are very common at your hardware stores. You specifically want to use PV wire because it's outdoor rated. It's meant to be in the sun or in contact with water and the ground for 25 years without the sheathing breaking down. So I have to add on all of these connectors uh, one by one, do it custom, because I just need this lead to go from the outside to the inside of the box. These MC4 connectors are really easy to work with and I highly recommend them over say like a Anderson power pole or other type of connection. And I'm gonna be using that with this DC switch so I have control over the solar input. It's time to get the inverter mounted and so I am put a screw into this wood backer. That way it's all easy to put up against one side. Trying to get this all stacked on top of the batteries was a little tricky and I didn't want to run into any heating issues. It makes it really easy for mounting stuff like this, the breaker for the inverter and all of the other components. So simply using a piece of plywood and these screws, I can get everything mounted in one spot that's easy to access. Now, I went back and forth multiple times on my wire management. So I tried going around to try to keep this all clean. It's not a good idea to have all of your solar cables touching or bound up in one spot because as they generate heat, one cable being hot will pass heat to another cable heating it up. And heat is another way that these breakers will trip. So I found a pretty clean way to run these wires here for the inverter 
from the batteries by using these little valleys in between the batteries so that way the cables are not touching each other which should reduce how much heat they ship to either to make sure it runs even easier. Now putting up the charge controller right here I'm going to get my first screw in so that I can hang it on and then get a second screw into place. I bought this Bougie RV 60 amp MPPT charge controller directly from Amazon and it's a very simple and basic system to get started with. So if you're new to solar this is a great way to do it. This DC switch for the solar doesn't have any mounting brackets on the outside so I have to remove the face and use some guide holes that are on the inside in order to get my screws in place so that way this will mount to the piece of wood. And I do recommend having some long bits. It makes it a lot easier so you don't have to pull the whole switch out of the housing. Now this screwdriver was a little excessive in length, but it's what I had that would reach into the inside in order to get that face closed up again. The most important thing I would say is getting this charge controller wired up properly. I've been doing solar for almost a decade now and I still messed this up because I wasn't paying attention. So it doesn't matter if you're brand new or you've been doing this for a while, pay attention to how you wire things together. I ended up actually shorting out one of the breakers that I was using for this as a safety measure and it actually protected the charge controller. That's why I recommend having breakers in place because it'll help cover you if you make any accidental connections. One of the most common ways people have issues with doing these connections is they will accidentally touch a positive post to a negative post and if it's energized you could short out what it's connected to. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up the battery so that way the charge controller knows how to charge it properly. There are multiple options here and I'm going to go with the lithium setting and just following the user manual this makes it very easy to know which setting I need to choose and I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the settings to make sure it's set properly and make sure that things are working as they should. Checking the voltages and power out Output and so on. Now it's time to put this all together and make sure that I wired it properly. So I'm going to turn on all of the breakers internally and if I get power to go through here then that means we're good to go. But I obviously want to put this through a bigger test so I'm going to go ahead and connect this heat gun because it'll pull a large load. This whole system will never be pulling a load this large so I know if I can sustain heat output like this that the system is wired properly and I'm not going to face issues in the future. This is a very simple system and you can see the input and output I put all on one battery at one end and that's simply because it was a clean looking setup. It may or may not be the best option. I could have had the input on one side and the output on the other but this made it simple and it's going to work just fine and in fact it has been working for multiple months now since I originally filmed this video and it has had zero issues. So I liked how I ran all these wires through here because there's nice open space to make sure there's good airflow. Everything's 100% watertight and this is going to be good for off-grid power at the end of the dock where it's currently being used. Now the biggest difference is you could just get a solar generator or power station and all of this would be done for you. But if you're looking to get started in learning how to do solar connections on your own, then this project would be something that you could do that would give you good backup power with five kilowatt hours of battery, 2000 watt inverter, and 880 watts of solar input. I'll put links down below to all of the parts in case you're interested in building something like this. I like this Seekin setup and I highly recommend these batteries. They have worked flawlessly for me and they're an amazing price.